You ever walk into something unwittingly, unknowingly, and by the time you realize what's actually going on, realizing it's too late to back out and just need to go full steam ahead. Well, in 1957, that's pretty much what happened to Carl Schmitt. Now, Carl Schmitt was a famed herpetologist at the time, and even today is well known for the fact that there are over 200 species named after him. Some of these species include the Schmitt's fringe toad lizard, Schmitt's blind snake, and the Schmitt's worm lizard. Basically, he was a big badass in his field at the time, but in September of 1957, he would do something that would completely change his life. Because on September 25th, he was brought a 30 inch snake and all he was told was this snake was from Africa and there were some hunches on what it was, but he could see that it was a smaller colubrid and it resembled a boomslang but he wasn't too sure on this, that there were some differences, like the anal plate was divided. Now, when I'm looking at a venomous snake, I'm not touching it until I know for sure, and I am not looking to see if the anal plate looks like this snake or that snake. Now, I understand he's a herpetologist and he has to dig a little deeper into this, but I am doing my best to make sure that I know what I'm looking at before I get hands on with this thing. But to be fair, that might be what separates a herpetologist that will be known throughout history and me. But on this day, as he's examining the snake, he goes to pick it up and it turns around and it bites him on his left thumb. Now some reports say there was two puncture marks. There were some reports that say there were one, but all that mattered was that what did get him got him very well. Now boom slangs are rear fanged snakes, meaning they have their fangs, not in the front, but all the way in the back. Colubrids that are venomous have fangs like this. Do have to chew, either chew on you a little bit or get a really good bite on you to actually get that venom delivered. But boom slang venom is no joke. And if you get bit by this snake, you're about to hear what happens. Now boom slangs have a hemotoxic venom that Basically, it attacks the blood cells. Blood cells will rupture. There's all sorts of different things that happen to you. Nausea, vomiting. The number one symptom of a boom slang bite is bleeding out of any orifice you have. And when I say any orifice, I mean your eyes, your mouth, your nose, any hole, any hole does not matter does not sound like a fun experience and Mr. Schmidt is about to find this out firsthand. But Mr. Schmidt being the scientist that he is kept a detailed journal of the incident and this, whoo, this is where things get interesting. From 4.40 to 5.30 p.m. on September 25th, 1957, this is his first journal entry about the incident. Strong nausea, but without vomiting. During a trip to Homewood, went on a suburban train. So he gets bit by the snake. And at this point, he knows what it is. 5.30 through 6.30 p.m. Strong chill and shaking, followed by a fever of 101.7. Bleeding of mucous membranes in the mouth began at 5.30. Apparently mostly from gums. Now at this point is when I'd start to get nervous, pretty much right away. The nausea, you can talk that up to almost anything. But bleeding around the mucous membranes, just, you're bleeding in your mouth. That's just like, I would, I would start freaking out at that point. I just got bit by a snake, I'm pretty sure is a very venomous snake, and I'm just bleeding out of my mouth. 8.30 p.m ate two pieces of milk toast. If I knew that I potentially could be dying here, which I'm not sure if he did or not, but he's starting to bleed out of his mouth and he's just gonna have something very bland milk toast. I wonder if he had that just because he wanted something easy to settle his stomach. Who knows? He knew. 9 p.m. to 12.20 a.m. Slept well. Urination at 12.20, mostly blood, but a small amount. At this point, I know something's very, very wrong. You don't just pee blood normally. Like
Like if you pee blood, that is panic mode setting in, not a good situation at all. And he got bit by the snake, he's already noticing blood, and now he's peeing blood. But only a small amount, it's just a little bit of blood, a little bit of blood, and you can deal with that. Took a glass of water at 4.30 a.m., followed by violent nausea and vomiting. The contents of the stomach being the undigested supper felt much better and slept until 6.30 a.m. Basically what you feel like when you've been partying all night and you throw up and you're like, okay, and then you go right to sleep. Except it's not caused by excessive drinking. It's caused by a venomous snake bite. I'd be at the hospital an hour and a half, two hours ago, easy. I would have been at the hospital at the mouth, uh, the blood in the mouth. This guy, I feel like he kind of knew something was gonna happen. September 26th at 6.30 a.m. Temperature 98.2. Ate cereal and poached eggs on toast and applesauce and coffee for breakfast. No urine with an ounce or so of blood about every three hours. Mouth and nose continue to bleed, not excessively. He gets up. He acts like nothing is going on. He makes himself a nice hearty breakfast with some coffee. He's, he's chilling, applesauce, he's, he's feeling all right, except for the fact that he's peeing blood about every three hours, only an ounce or so. There's no urine in it though, it is strictly blood. Oh, you thought there was gonna be another entry? That was it. That was the last entry in Schmidt's journal. The rest of this story picks up from outside accounts because the last thing that Schmidt ever wrote in his journal was excessively. And when you're talking about something that has to do with blood, excessively is usually not something you want to hear. At about 1.30 p.m., he vomited and knew it was there was something really wrong, and so he called his wife. Where was his wife this whole rest of this time? Good question. I have no idea. But by the time help got to him, he was unresponsive, sweating, and he, he couldn't talk. It got him to a hospital, and by 3 p.m., he was pronounced dead at the hospital. Now, there are a few accounts of this situation as well. People knew that this was a boom slang, especially after he got bit, and he was told to seek medical attention, but he refused. And his reasoning, it would upset the symptoms. He wanted to see what would happen. At least that is what you would be led to believe. But being the herpetologist he was, knowing that he just got bit by this snake, when he actually did identify what it was and realized what it was, he most likely knew that the only way to get the anti-venom was to somehow get it over to Africa because Africa was the only place that at the time the anti-venom was being made because the snake is from there. So why would somebody in the United States have this anti-venom? So the thought process is that he just accepted the fact that he was probably going to die and just wanted to make any sort of scientific breakthrough he could with the situation at hand. And it is one of the most interesting reads. It's a very short read, but the thought of sitting there knowing that you just got bit by a snake and are probably going to die, and instead of freaking out and making a big scene of it, you just act like nothing's happening, go about your day, and write down everything that happens. From the time that he got bit to the time of his death was less than 24 hours. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you like this, let me know. If you want to see more like this, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a good rest of your day.